Well, hello, everybody. Happy Saturday afternoon. It's me. We haven't done this in a while, guys, have we? I haven't had a sit-down video in quite some time. I just haven't had a lot of stuff happen lately that I felt was sit-down video material. Uh, I didn't want to make a bunch of videos just for the sake of it about stuff that I didn't think was worth discussing, so I decided to lay low in streams. <clears throat> I was doing some of the hot tub videos, obviously, but today we finally have a reason to come together here. I have a reason to sit in this chair and make a video with this webcam, so obviously something real happened today. Um, I'm going to be straight honest with you, I was asleep until about half an hour ago, so I looked at my phone when I was lying in bed. I, I know that's I was sleeping in really late, it's like past 2 o'clock now, but whatever. I wasn't really expecting anything to happen today. And I checked my phone and I saw 15 minutes prior to me looking at my phone, we had gone and done it. We had made a monster, blockbuster, season-defining, era-defining, GM and coach and coaching staff-defining trade with the New York Football Jets, the J-E-T-S. And I've already gotten pinged on YouTube and Twitter a couple times saying, you're going to make a video about this, right? And yeah, I am. This is certainly video worthy. So let me give you the rundown real quick. I'm sure you guys know, but the Seattle Seahawks have acquired from the New York Jets, Jamal Adams and a fourth round pick. That is Jamal Adams and a fourth round pick. And the Jets have acquired from the Seahawks two first round picks a third round pick, and Bradley McDougald. Again, two first round picks, a third round pick, and Bradley McDougald. So that is quite a bit to digest, quite a bit to go over. We finally have something real to talk about, guys, not this BS of Quentin Dunbar. Is he going to play or is he not going to play? We, we don't know. Is he guilty? Is he innocent? Did he do this? Did he do that? <clears throat> not are we going to trade for Chris Jones this is something that has happened and that's exciting on its own so let's go over the positives and the negatives and we're going to decide how we feel about this trade at the end so positives I said this team needed blue chippers we just got a massive blue chipper this Jamal Adams guy based off his career um, arc so far based off his talent based off his where he was drafted based off everything we've seen so far with this guy is a generational safety. He is to this decade or his era of playing football, what Earl was Earl Thomas was to his. And now we have him and assuming we give him the extension that he's desiring, which I'm sure we must have agreed to before this trade, we're going to have him for a while. So that is a big win. I said we needed players worth a crap. In the grand scheme of things, we have a lot of players that are good. We have a lot of players we like, but we have not had blue chippers on this roster in maybe a year, in my opinion, outside of Wilson and now maybe Metcalf. Now we have another blue chipper. And that was what I was pining for in the offseason, the draft, which we would have obviously had to trade up to do, which we didn't do. And now we've finally gone ahead and made that big trade for a guy who is a transcendent Hall of Fame, best safety in the league type talent. So that kind of wins me over right then and there. But that's kind of the main positive you can take away from this trade because I cannot say that we got away with robbery. I cannot say we fleeced the Jets. I cannot say we definitively won this trade. So let's swing into some of the negatives. One, I will admit this. I thought that Jamal Adams could have been had for a much cheaper price than this. I thought he could have been had for a first round pick and a semi blue chipper like Shaq Griffin, or maybe a first round pick, a third round pick in Bradley McDougald. Um, I don't have a lot of respect for the Jets front office. I don't have a lot of respect for Adam Gase and I think Douglas Adams or no, what's his name? The GM of the Jets, Joe Douglas. Something like that. Douglas something. Uh, I thought maybe we could get him for more like one first round pick. And that's that, that would have sufficed. But I will say this in reply to that. I was wrong. 
they valued him properly. They wanted a massive haul for Jamal Adams. And I don't really have a problem with us giving that to the Jets in order to get a guy like Jamal Adams. Sometimes you have to break some eggs in order to make an omelet. We had to break a lot of eggs to make this omelet, but I think I still agree with making that omelet. Um, the other negative, of course, and not that this is really a uh, on-field negative. This is more of a you know emotional negative. I want to say big shout out to Bradley McDougald for what he did as a Seahawk. I thought he was a soldier. He was a trooper. He was a really good player. He wasn't great. He was never great. He was a solid, effective safety for us for a few years. He outplayed his contract. He outplayed the draft capital we gave up to trade for him. I, I think that he was a guy who was one of our best defensive players last year on a defense that was admittedly pretty bad, but he was one of the guys trying to hold it together. Um, I, I still agree with giving up a guy like a Bradley McDougal to get a generational talent like Jamal Adams, but I do want to give my shout outs to McDougal for being a good trooper for us for a few years there. And in some ways, it's sad to see him go. And the final real negative I want to go over here is what does this say about Marquise Blair? Nothing positive. We just gave up the farm to get a safety who will be a long-term solution at that position instead of Marquise Blair. So that doesn't say anything positive about Mr. Blair now, does it? Uh, it's possible Diggs is not a long-term solution for us at the other safety spot. It's possible that somebody's going to move to nickel cornerback. It's possible we're going to shuffle things around like that. But as of right now, I have to question where Marquise Blair is in the long-term plans. Now, as for a verdict, here's what I say. Going over the negatives I just went over, I don't mind giving up McDougal if you're getting Blair. Those are the kinds of swaps you have to make if you want to try to win a Super Bowl. You have to get rid of the good to get the great. You have to get rid of the great to replace the to to bring in the elite, and that's what we've done here. Um, I'm not too upset. I mean, if if Marquise Blair isn't it, then it's better to admit it now than wait two years to admit it after he's already disappointed us and we're not getting anything out of him and. Now we can maybe trade Blair for a little something, for all I know. Maybe that's in the pipeline. As for the picks, somebody on Twitter, when I was scrolling through Twitter after this trade happened, made a good point. If we took our two first-round picks over the next two years, which are probably estimated to be somewhere in the 20s, and tried to package those two trades in an attempt to trade up to number six overall, we would not be able to do that. No team would do that. No team would take our mid-20s picks, which is what our picks project to be, to give up to us the sixth overall pick. So in that regard, it's a good trade because that's where Jamal Adams was picked, sixth overall. And on top of that, we already know how good Jamal Adams is. This is not an unknown sixth overall pick. We know he's as good as that draft status, maybe better. And obviously things like the third round pick and Bradley McDougal, they have value. But when you think about it like that, it's really just bridging the um, deficiencies between those two things together. Um, I will say it's going to be expensive. I know the extension we're going to have to give him is, ex is expensive as well, but I'm not counting that as a negative because, quite frankly, he's worth it. But the number one reason why I think I like this trade a lot and why I'm pro the Jamal Adams trade, because I had said before I didn't know if we needed a safety, but I was willing to make an exception for a dude as good as Jamal Adams. I think the number one reason I like this is if it works out, it works out, and we're all happy. If it doesn't work out, this is probably something that's going to get a lot of people fired, which me and a lot of others have been clamoring for. If this trade doesn't work out somehow, John Schneider is going to probably go because you can't make a trade this big and have it blow up in your face and not face consequences. Pete Carroll's probably going to step down because this is something that cripples your franchise if it doesn't work out. A lot of the defensive staff can go, guys like, you know, Ken Norton Jr., because if they acquire an all-pro talent like Jamal Adams and can't make it work, then that's a huge indictment on them. So this is a make-or-break moment for a lot of parts of this organization. And yeah, I, I, that kind of excites me because this is going to be a litmus test for a lot of our staff in front office. If they can make this work, 
then they've proven their value. If they can't make this work, I have to believe that even a guy, somebody, uh, a person like a Jody Allen is going to realize it's time to move on. Uh, final little footnote here. I don't know how good Jamal Adams will look in this defense because we're not going to have a real offseason. I don't know if he's going to be able to thrive with our pass rush being what it is. So hopefully we're not done yet, but the financial situation that we're facing might force us to be done, in which case we're going to learn quite a bit about our faith in guys like Mayoa, Irvin, Taylor, Rasheen Green, and um, there's another place where the front office is in a make-or-break spot, right? If that, if those guys don't work out, sayonara front office, sayonara coaching staff, so yay. All right, I'm going to stream in a little bit here. I'm going to let this video sit up for a little bit, and uh, come catch me on stream if you want to talk about this more. Go Hawks. See you there.